Hi everyone, this is Joanna Connor from the Chicago Blues Boot Camp. We hope you're doing well. And once again, we're going to explore one of the chestnuts of the blues songbook, Big Bill Brunzi's Key to the Highway, which a lot of you know from people like Eric Clapton. And uh, Big Bill did it in the key of E, but because one of my last lessons was in the key of E with Mojo Warkin, I would like to do it in the key of A, like Clapton does. So what we're going to do is I'm going to combine kind of a traditional style, a la Robert Johnson, Big Bill Brunzi, with my own Chicago-influenced style with trademark licks that we do on the blue scene today in Chicago which of course borrows from the past and um, from present day. So there's a lot of patterns rhythmically we can play, but I'm gonna sing one verse for you and uh, we'll talk about the rhythm parts and then we're gonna talk about some playing some slide, even though it's not known as a slide song, any tune, and I'm sweating like we're in the Delta, so there you go, it's authentic. Um, any of these, um, any tune you can play with the slide. And I am in standard tuning, I'm not in open tuning. My guitar is set up for regular guitar playing, not slide playing, so don't be intimidated. You don't have to go out and buy a special guitar. You don't have to be in open tuning, although we might explore open tuning in other lessons. So first, here we go. I'm gonna start off with the turnaround, actually. I got the key. a little something something while I'm singing so if you're not singing it's a little easier to explore some of the more rhythmic patterns here and so we're gonna start off kind of showing you what I just did so this is a very common shape in blues it's a seventh or a derivative of a seventh chord I'm not gonna go into a lot of theory we're just gonna talk about what we're doing so if you had a traditional D seventh chord which is second finger excuse that motion, on the third string on the second fret, first finger on the first fret of the second string, and the third finger of the second fret of the first string, that's a D seventh, we're gonna slide it up all the way to the ninth fret and eighth fret. Same shape. And a lot of times with that shape, what makes it sound really bluesy is kind of coming from the half step before. And I'm also, what I'm doing, this is my own little trademark. I take my pick and I kind of tuck, this is what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you. I have it like this. I tuck it inside of my first finger so I can use it when I want to or I can Put it away when I want to play with my fingers. I like to combine in some of the things I do finger work and picks. So that's my little trick. So here we go. We're going to fold it in. We're going to put our thumb on the A open A string. And also a great way that I learned to finger pick was when you use your thumb, you're really going to put it out there in a 90 degree angle. I'm using these other two fingers. Uh, the middle and third finger, you don't usually use your pinky. I usually put mine up like this, it looks so nice. <laughs> That's just an accident, but anyway. Um, so here we go. So that's kind of a triplet feel too, which in blues, even though it's usually, it's almost always in 4-4 four, four time or 12-8, four beats to a measure, you get a lot of this triplet feeling. Like, so it's a very common rhythmic phrase in the blues. So even if somebody's doing something like this, which we'll get to, the typical lump, we call it in Chicago. So whenever you're in a situation where you're jamming with someone else and they're doing this, you can add that, and this doesn't just apply to Key to the Highway, but to any kind of traditional blues shuffle or lump. The lump is more of that bump, 
a bump. We call it a lump in Chicago. So, so I started off with this. That's kind of the Robert Johnson or Big Bill Brunzi thing. What am I doing? I'm taking my first finger on the ninth fret, because there's an E chord right here, and it's called an inversion. And some of you advanced players might know that. Some of you that just started, it doesn't matter. It's, in other words, another way of playing a chord. Inversions are just, when you have a root at the bottom, third and fifth, which is in this case, you know, E, G, B. Sometimes, instead of the root being on the bottom, you have the third of the fifth. So that's what an inversion is. So we're using just part of this E inversion. That's a E major, which is first finger on the ninth fret, half barring the D, G, and B, or fourth, third, and second string, and the third finger on 11th fret of A, or fifth string. But we're only going to use the D, G, B, four, three, two, and add our ring finger on 10th fret. So we're coming from here. And if you want to, which I might do, is add your pinky on the 12th fret of first string, which is E. And you could pull it on and off. Kind of gives you that delta thing. So it's kind of nice to do that. What makes um, blues and, and rhythm playing in blues and other music interesting is adding things like that. Adding little embellishments to your uh, chord structure. So we got this, the A, E, then up to the back, all the way down to the D7. And what we're going to do is take off, and this shirt doesn't want to cooperate, take off the first finger off your B string on the first fret. Once again, that's a traditional move by Big Bill Brunzi and Robert Johnson. Okay, so this isn't like a typical A to the four chord, which is D to E. We're going from the A, which is the one chord, to the five, which is what we just did, down to the four. So that's what makes key to the highway a little different than your typical, if you want to call it that, uh, blues song. So kind of gives it a nice, interesting way of playing, you know, the melody is a little different, so it's kind of cool. One chord. Four chord, that was a five chord just then. what I just do? Oh, this is the same chord up here. I just slid up to the 14th and 13th fret. I didn't even pick up my fingers. Just the octave up there. Now I'm going to do this. I'm going to the first position E, which I'm sure all of you know. And what's cool here is I'm hammering on the first fret of the G string. And then I'm adding the pinky on the third fret of the B string for the seventh chord. Then to the D seventh again. Then you do this turnaround. Well, this turnaround, which I really like, which is the Robert Johnson turnaround, what is that? Middle finger on the fifth fret of the D string or fourth string. Third finger on the fifth string of the E string. So basically, actually, you know, we're going to do it this way. Instead of switching, we're going to just keep our pinky on this. Okay, so we're doing parallel. Walking down, fourth fret of the D string, third fret of the D string, second. That's a big stretch there, but it's a good one. It's good for you. So just if you can't get it right away, don't worry. And then we go in, I'm not even making a full E there. You can, but the cool thing about the E is it's open. You can just hammer on, or you can do the whole thing, or add that. That's your choice. So that's one rhythmic pattern. The next rhythmic pattern we might do is if you're in a situation with more than one guitarist, is more the... Now what am I doing for that sound? Just in case you're kind of starting out, I'm using this part of my hand. I call it the meaty part of the right hand. And I'm laying it kind of near the bridge. 
I'm not pressing really hard, but I'm laying it down enough where it's damping. It's a damping technique. Why do you do it? It gives it a nice rhythmic feel. It gives it a little bit more syncopation. I went down a half step. Oh, what's that? Another B7 chord. Okay. Well, maybe we'll get to that in a minute. We'll do this for now. One chord. Oops. <laughs> I made a mistake. That's all right. I made a mistake again. <laughs> Let's do that again. Because I'm a Virgo. I have to be perfect. Bound to go. Okay, so here's another one more pattern and then we're going to go to the slide. Okay. Okay. So we're going to play these seventh chords, which is your typical seventh chord with the e, A bar. I'm sure you all know this one. We're just going to move it to the pinky on the eighth fret of the B string. So. Is that another form of a seventh what are we doing we're laying our first finger across all strings at the seventh fret we're putting our ring finger or third finger on the ninth of the D or fourth string pinky on the ninth fret okay so that's the shape you're going to use for the E and the D and I'm pulling off the pinky because once again that kind of gives it that bluesy feel as a pull off I'm using my pick this time Another turnaround, which you probably know, but I'll go over it just in case. We had this turnaround earlier, and we did this one. This one is same as this, you're just taking off the outer E string. Because when you're playing with more, say there's three of you, don't play the same thing the guy next to you is playing, or a woman. Play something different, and it'll sonically sound good, you won't get in each other's way. That's one thing. Dion Payton, my first real blues gig, Tommy, don't ever play with the other guitar players playing unless there's a certain reason. And I think I said that in my last video. So we went over those three rhythm parts. The last one I was a little sloppy with, but we'll... There's the three rhythm parts. You can learn all of them. And what's great about the blues is like building a vocabulary. Once you learn these little tricks, you can use it in other circumstances on other tunes because there's lots of little hallmark licks you learn to play rhythm. So now that we're going to play slide. Like I said, there is no slide part on this usually. But since I'm a slide teacher, we're going to go over some of that. And uh, I went over something with someone today. First of all, we're going to go through the, the uh, technique again. We are using, I'm using it on my pinky. It fits right on my pinky finger. And I'm anchoring with the third against the slide. The middle finger is my, my trick, my, my trick of the trade to dampen. And it's going to be stiff. It's not going to, it's going to be pretty firm. You're not going to press in the strings, but it's going to be right there. Also, your hand is going to be flat. You're going to use the tip of the slide and you're going to, you move your wrist and you're gonna keep that slide dead on the fret. You don't want it to be tilted. Your hand could be tilted with that pinky gotta be right over it. So what we're gonna do is play an A chord here on the 14th fret of the three inner strings, D, G, and B. So I, what did I do? I added, kind of like dust my broom, but I added the so in that little box right there, you've got a lot of licks. So that is between the 14, 15, 16, 17th and 14th frets. With this, A chord is your home base. There's the uh, D. And there's the 
Where's the E? Where's the E? It's on the ninth fret of D, G, and B. Seventh fret is the D. So what are we going to do? We can play around with that area without really leaving it. So. What did I just do? I slid into. Right in there, you've got so much to work with. So I'm sliding into the eighth fret, to the ninth, sixth fret, into the seventh. So just in those little boxes, unlimited amounts of licks, believe it or not. For now, that's what we're going to just work with. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed this lesson.